And I like to do it myself instead of having a secretary do it, so therefore it sits here for about four weeks before I even get to it. First of all, I just like to make a few notes here. Okay. You know, I'd like to know the atmosphere. Okay, now this is the anchor office, and it's extremely quiet. Glover sits over there, Robbie Timmons sits there, and Ken Ford is there. Ken, I hate because his desk is so clean. Uh, <laughs> that is the newsroom that we walk through. And uh, this time of day, it's not too busy because we have all of our reporters out on the streets and our producers are just getting ready for this in, in terms of ascertaining what they're going to have on the 6 o'clock show. Uh, it starts getting hectic about 3.30, 4 o'clock. That's when our reporters are all in and they're getting their scripts and we're cutting tape and we're cutting the film that would be used on the 6 o'clock show. So right now, it's not too busy. Okay, can I just see if this, this is picking up? Oh, just a second. You've got to go share this room with four other reporters? No, anchors. The reporters are out there. So there's a difference between an anchor person and a reporter. A reporter is someone who goes out and covers the story. An anchor person is the person that sits in the studio and reads the daily news in addition to introducing the reporter's pieces. So the difference in a reporter and an anchor person is that the anchor person literally sits in the studio and kind of garnishes all the information that the reporters bring in and relate it to you, where a reporter goes out on one specific story or two specific stories and covers just that. Well, that's one question that I wanted to ask. Okay, there is also, when you talk about what are goals in this business, there's more money in anchoring the show than there is in reporting. And that all relates to the ratings and why people watch certain stations. Why do you watch a certain station? Well, you either like me or you like Joe Glover or you don't like us or you love John Kelly and you love Jack LaGuard. You know, you watch a station because of the anchor people that are on it and also their ability to gather news. And I think that most stations in this town, the three major stations, do a fairly good job of of gathering news. We all have the same as access to various, access rather, to various stories. So why do you watch it? You watch it because you like Woody Willis, or you like Ron Sanders, or you like Nancy McCauley, or, or you like uh, someone on another station, right? I mean, that's why you well, look that, at a news that program. Would be a part of mm -hmm. too, I guess, right? What I wanted to ask you, um, would you, um, what would you find more interesting and at, at one time did you report the news did you go out and get it no I have never that's never interest me I'm more interested in interviewing people and I'll do quite a few interviews sometimes on my noon show last night I did an interview segment or I'll do documentaries day-to-day -day reporting does not excite me I would much rather sit in the studio and tell you everything that's going on in Detroit, everything that's going on in the state, and everything that's going on in the world. I'd much rather break a story to you than to go out and, and cover it. And that's now different people feel differently about that. Reporting is not my thing. Uh, I like anchoring. I also like interviewing situations where I can sit down in a studio or at a hotel or wherever and talk with a celebrity or a personality or just an interesting person um, and, and find out interesting things about them. Well, how did, don't most, um, let's say, anchor persons, don't they have to, like, climb a ladder? Right, well, right, they do. Okay, start? I started um, in Tokyo, Japan. That's literally where I started in television. And I started by co-hosting a late-night talk show nationwide called Tokyo 11 p.m. And I was a co-hostess, and what I did was interview people. It was like a Johnny Carson celebrities, movie stars, baseball players, just everyday nuts, you know. Um, and I also taught English on the educational stations there. There are two, and they are owned and operated by the government. There's no money problem, no funding problem. So I did that for two and a half, almost three years. We came back to the United States, and I didn't work at all for a year. I was in uh, San Francisco. We moved to Detroit, and... Um, I decided my children were older. I decided I would 
get back into television and I came out here and I did a videotape and I told them my experience had been in television just interviewing. I had no knowledge of news whatsoever. I had taught and I had interviewed. So what they did was give me a program, um, Focus Detroit with Woody Willis. That's when I first started at TV2, almost four years ago. And we interviewed people from various walks of lives, movie stars, but it was a minority-oriented program, okay? Dealt with problems that were specific to minority people. And after doing that for three months, the audience response was very good to me. Um, this was a half-hour program on Sundays, but nevertheless, people were calling up and asking for me to send pictures and, you know, who is she, where did she come from? The, the audience response was very good. So they called me up front and they said, we are going to revamp our news department. We're going to start a new hour show in the morning, and we'd like you to do it with Vic Caputo. And I said, well, I don't know anything about news, reading. You know, I had never reported. And they said, that's okay, you'll learn. And they said, we'll have interviews there, so, you know, uh, you know how to do that very well. Well, it turned out it was half interview and half uh, anchoring. And I think I was awful when I first started. I really do. But I took my script home every day, and I would study it, and I would look at the videotape every morning. I would go over the whole show and critique it. And I'd say, you shouldn't do this, or you shouldn't do that, or you should be looking more at the camera. And within three or four months, I, was, I, was, I could see progress in my tapes. I was coming along very well. There were no women on the air at that time, and so I had no one to imitate. Uh, you had Walter Cronkite, you know, or Jack LaGoff. There were no women, and so it was very difficult for me because I didn't. I was trying to find a style that would be acceptable. That's another question that I wanted to ask you. Is um, first of all, are there any reporters that you look up to? Um, and I wanted to take um, Barbara Walters, for instance. Would you ever want to have a position or to be a reporter like Barbara Walters? Oh yes, of course. I would be. It would be foolish of me to say no. I wouldn't. I get offers all the time from the networks, but I have a contract here at TV2 that runs another two years, and the last contract started a year ago. In terms of uh, financial, uh, the financial aspects of it, I make as much or more than the men in this market, all you other anchor men. And so I decided that I would stay, although I have, I have numerous. I got a call from Good Morning America about six months ago when Nancy Dussault was planning on leaving, and they wanted me to fly in for an audition with David Hartman. And I said, I'm not interested in doing a morning show again. I had done it, and I'm tired of getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. It just doesn't appeal to me anymore. Um, and I constantly get calls from the network. I have not had a call to come and anchor with Walter Cronkite. If I had one, it wouldn't take me but two seconds to say, yes, I'll be there. Uh, but that doesn't come very easily, and uh, it may be in the future, it may not. I think the big mistake with Barbara Walters is that Barbara Walters was an interviewer. She's never been an anchor person. And I think also this big blow-up about her salary. Walter Cronkite has been making $500,000 for I don't know how many years. He takes three months off every year, and no one makes a big thing of it, I think because she was a woman, that they, you know, the people and print journalists really have a thing against television journalists because first of all there's so much difference in the money and I really feel it's envy and very seldom will you see a print journalist say anything nice about a television journalist they don't like us mm, yeah, I, I never noticed yeah, well, look, look at your, yeah if you look at your newspapers just look at your newspapers here. after you bring it up then yeah they, it, they, they really don't and uh, they also feel that we do a lot of crazy things they talk about the happy talk news well on television, it's a, it's a visual medium. When you pick up a newspaper, you see, you pick up a newspaper and you've got the front page. Okay, we do the front page. But the free press and the news and every other paper in the country, they've got tip-off. They've got little cartoons. They've got their feature page. And if you don't like something, you can skip over it. We cannot look over it. You, you see, on television, you cannot skip it. You just turn the channel. So we have to make our newscast interesting for you, as well as informative. Well, um, I'd, I'd like to ask you, do you think, um, I'd like to ask you something about um, your life as a teenager and as a child. Did you go to college? Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in San Francisco. Uh, 
I think I wanted to be a magician as a child. <laughs> when I was 12 and 13, I'm going to be the best magician in the world. And I used to drive my parents crazy by sending off for all these magic kits and making them sit through my magic shows. Um, and then as I got older, uh, I decided that I would go to the University of San Francisco simply because I like the campus. Um, and I went there and I majored in education. I was going to be a teacher with a minor in foreign languages. I thought if I didn't like teaching, then I would go to the United Nations and perhaps be a a um, interpreter or something, or maybe live abroad and work with the State Department. So these were kind of my goals in college. I met a man that I fell in love with, and I married, and I abandoned those goals. I had children, and I um, just just didn't do what I would wanted to do. And really, I got back into television, uh, or got into television quite by accident. I have an ear for languages, and uh, as I said, I minored in languages in, in uh, college. And so, while I was in Tokyo, one of my students that I was teaching English to, uh, I can't concentrate. So, um, it was really picking up languages and teaching languages, and I speak Japanese fluently. And so oh, that's... You, you were teaching... Uh, Japanese, yes. I was teaching English to Japanese people. Oh, when you... Okay, what made you go to Japan? I was married, and my husband was working for the State Department. Oh, okay. May I ask how many children? You I have, have three, three children. Three, three boys. boys. Uh-huh. Okay, um... Okay, I am divorced. I am not married now. Can I ask the ages? No, I don't like to give out their ages. I'll tell you if it's all... Uh, I've had kidnapping attempts made on the children's oh. life, and so since that time, I know I don't show them. <laughs> you know, I don't say anything about their ages. I don't want anyone to even know what they look like or anything. But I, I so I just let it go. Yes, okay, I have I three children. Just, like, okay. I just got that off the list. Okay, real good. Okay. Uh -huh. Wow, that's yeah. too bad. If people try to do that. Too. Yes, it is. It really is, it's, and it's it's always a concern. Do people ever try to harm you? Well, I've had one kidnapping attempt made on me. Um, I was under I had undercover police protection about two years ago for about four months. Uh, two men were waiting for me outside my garage one morning, and I was doing the morning show about five o'clock in the morning. And uh, I was just I'm very quick, thank God. What and, did you do? Well, I ran. <laughs> I ran, and I, I I managed to escape from them. So ever since then, I'm very careful. I carried a gun for about a year. And then I was so nervous around the children with it, you know, and I finally stopped carrying the gun. But for a long time, I was extremely nervous. If anyone even looked at me strange, I was, you know, what are they planning? Uh, all my calls are screened. It's very difficult, I'm sure you found that out, to get yeah. through to me. Uh, because I have so many men who are just playing crazy. And they see me on the air, and, you know, I want to marry you, I want to take you away, and, and so you just, you know, you can't deal with that. Um, and I also get a lot of requests for public appearances and things, and so I just, I had to stop answering my own telephone, which I hated to do, but I never got any work done, because I was just, no, I'm sorry, I can't make that, and if you, if you say, yes, you'll come to this, then someone else calls you, well, you went to hers, why won't you come to ours, and it's just, you know, very, that, that part of it is kind of difficult. Um, I, I want to see, um, what is your Finally, you went to high school and everything. Mm -hmm. I went to college, right. And you majored in language. Right. Um, what made you choose Japanese? Or well, did, I did. Did you not learn it until after you went I to went Japan? I went to Japan, and I just picked it up. We lived in downtown Tokyo for three years. Um, and all of I had a housekeeper and a cook and a nanny, and they spoke nothing but Japanese. My children went to Japanese schools. My neighbors were all Japanese. So I learned to speak the language. It was just as simple as that. I am not fluent reading and writing Japanese, but I certainly am very good conversational Japanese. Um, That's okay. Tell you, as an interviewer, um, that happens to me all the time. Does it? And you just go on to something else. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, just go on to something. It'll come back to you. Okay. Um, you, oh. I just thought of, yeah. Um, when um, you were in high school, did you get good grades? Were yes, I was, I really, uh, straight A's. Uh, the only subject I did very poorly in, and when I say poorly, um, most people would be pretty happy with a B minus, but math, I am not good in math. I, I have terrible, terrible time, checkbooks and things like that, and uh, I have an accountant who takes care of all of my tax things. I, I'm just terrible in math.
Um, what made you, after you came back from Japan, and you were living in San Francisco, mm -hmm. um, that's where you had grown up? That's where I was brought up, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what made you come to, to Detroit? My husband accepted a job here. My then husband. <laughs> um, I see. Um, did you like Detroit? Did well, we lived in Windsor for a year, in Ontario, right across the water there. We'd heard a lot of negative things about Detroit, um, even at that time, and that was four years ago. Um, and so we'd heard that the suburbs were terribly racist, and that the city was full of crime. And I said, well, where in the heck are we going to live? And so it just so happened that um, he was looking for housing, and there was a house for lease in Windsor. And it was a, it was a Canadian insurance executive, and he had just bought this home, and was transferred to Toronto, and was only going to be there for a year and wanted to lease his home rather than sell it. And so we said, fine, it was a brand new home, nice, nice new home. And so we lived there for a year. And um, the reason I moved back to the United States, because I, I like Canada and I like the Canadian people, my children did not have a sense of black identity. We would come to Detroit, because you must remember that um, they were babies, one was born in Japan and the other two were literally very small children when they went there. And com upon coming back, we went to, came to Windsor, where, of course, there are very few black folks. And they really didn't have a sense of what being black was. We'd come to the United States. And when I say come to the United States, you know, we'd come across the river to Detroit on Sundays and we'd visit with people. And we'd go through areas where there are a great deal of black people. And the children would say, where did all these brown people come from? And I'd say, hey, look, you know, you're brown too. And so we felt that they should be in, in an integrated neighborhood, which is where I live now. Um, I live in Detroit. And uh, I want them, I don't ever want them to be the only black children, nor do I want them to be brought up in a totally black environment. I want them to be able to deal with all kinds of people. And so um, that was the reason upon moving to Detroit. I like Detroit. I, I think it's a very interesting city. There are a lot of problems here. But I think that it's, um, it's kind of interesting. It's, you know, one of the largest cities in the country, and all big cities are experiencing problems. And um, I'm very encouraged by the Renaissance, the Renaissance Center, and uh, in my neighborhood particularly, there are young white couples moving back from the suburbs, as well as black young couples moving in, rather than moving to the suburbs, because I think in Detroit you find the best buy for your money. So um, I, like, I like Detroit. I hate the weather here. I, I can't stand it. You prefer warm weather? Well, not real warm, but yes, certainly warmer than what we have here, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, do you, do you ever have time for, or do you have much time for your social life or for your life at home? Yes, I make time. I, ma I make time. I don't have a great deal of time, but I, I make time. Um, you don't allow the job to interfere too much? No, no, I don't. Uh, particularly with the children, they come first. And if there's something that's very important or one of them are very sick or something, I'll stay home. And they're very understanding about it here. Um, do you have to hire someone to take care? Yes, I have a full-time housekeeper. Mm -hmm. Yes, I could not deal with, you know, what I have to deal with here and be mommy and then go home and have to clean the house and, you know, wash clothes and do things like that. I just would be exhausted all the time. I just don't have the stamina to do that and there's no reason to. I can well afford to have someone come in and help me and I do that. Um, what about your hobbies? When you do have time, what do you do? Uh, well, I love to read, and I think in any spare time I have, I do two things. Um, one, I listen to music, which relax, relaxes what me. What uh, I like um, soft rock or folk music, Joan Baez, Judy Collins. Um, I also will read, and I mean, when I say read, I mean everything from Rolling Stone magazine, of course, Newsweek and Time are a must every week, both newspapers here every day, novels, um, I read to relax as well as to inform. Did you, did you do that in high school? Yes, I've always been a reader. I learned to read, I think, when I was three, and um, so I've, I've been a reader all my life. And I think that's important, particularly in this business because you have to be aware of what's going on in the world. And uh, how are you aware? You, you read, right? Right. Um, um, I know the news day must be an awfully busy day, mm -hmm. and it's a routine, mm -hmm. right? 
world, what, what, what's the best part of the day? Part of the day that you look forward to the most? <laughs> when I'm finished, <laughs> when I crawl in the bed at night, um, I guess the best the best time of day is coming off the six o'clock show. We had a good show. We had a lot of good pieces in it, and I felt I've really done well. That's satisfying. Um, has anything really unusual ever happened to you while you um, were while you were on the air? Yes, I, a couple of times I've gone into coughing spasms, which have been fun. I couldn't stop coughing, and I had to leave the air. Uh, but I guess that would be the only thing, you know. Uh, you learn to deal with technical problems. Very often you're, um, well, Friday night was a good example. We have big RP projection screens behind us. Joe has one, and I have one. And one of them went out Friday night, which meant that all the camera angles had to be changed. And uh, we had one of our cassette machines ate up a couple of pieces our producer was going bananas because we were short on time. It was just kind of a crazy night. And then my RP started flickering, and it went out, which meant that we had no RPs at all, and they had to go back to the old-time way of throwing a slide up there with us reading over it. Um, but we work well here at TV2 together. I really think we work very well. The producers, the directors, and the writers, and the uh, the uh, stagehands and the camera people, they all work, we all work very well together. So we just kind of hang loose. You have to. Because if you get up tight, the people at home are going to get up tight too. Um, obviously, you're not a photographer, but do you agree with women's lib? Do you seem like well, um, women's lib? I'm for liberation of all people. Um, in terms of, I would say more the women's movement. Yes, I am definitely for the women's movement. I think it's made tremendous uh, changes in our society as a whole. I think men see women differently now, that everybody's questioning themselves. And I think it's really as a result of the women's movement. Um, I think it's very important that everyone be treated, and, and particularly as a black person, where we have had to struggle against racism, and we've also had to struggle against sexism. And uh, those are two battles that are not over. And I think that we'll continue fighting them as long as both of us are here. Hopefully one day they will be eradicated. Um, do you... Um well, let's say, what kind of example do you feel that as a black woman, um, what impression or example do you think that you set for other black women? Well, hopefully a good one. One that um, makes a young woman sitting at home saying, well, if she does that, then I probably can too. Is that a part of your goal? I hope so. Yes, I, I definitely hope so. What, what, what are your goals? Have you reached them yet, or are you still... Um, well, my goal is to one day sit back on a beach and write a book about my life experiences. <laughs> um, and I'm having fun until I get to that point of kind of having fun doing it. In terms of my career right now, I guess I'm where I, I want to be right now. Uh, I could be in New York right now if I wanted to be, and I'm not. So I guess I'm not really ready for that. Um, it'll be a lot easier for me when my children are grown. And because uh, I have, you know, responsibilities to them right now, which makes me stop and think whenever I get an offer to do anything, how will it affect their lives? Um, but I'm very happy with that. Um, do you have time to do things like go shopping for clothes? Like oh, sure. Clothes. But what I do is one afternoon, I'll, I'll leave here like at 1 o'clock, and I'll go to one of my places favorite places to shop, but I'll go in and I'll spend the whole afternoon there, and I'll buy maybe $2,000 worth of clothes, just, just like that. And then maybe I won't buy anything for another six months. But those $2,000, you must re realize that being on the air every day, I have to have a lot of clothes. I can't come on every day with the same outfit. People are going to say, you know, what's wrong with her? You know, why does she, have, why does she ever change her clothes? Um, and I go places and people look at me and so, you know, clothes say a lot about what you are before they, you even open your mouth. So I, and also for me, clothes are tax deductible, or some of them anyway. So when I say I spend $4,000 a year, $5,000 a year on clothing, um, it's really not that bad because I can take it off my income tax. Um, well, you I'm getting the impression that you're satisfied with your mind. Yes, very. Yes, very. Um, I mean, you know, everybody has good days and bad days. But I think, generally speaking, I'm very happy with my life. Yeah.
you know, I, I can see it seems like everybody wants to be where they know themselves and they know what they want out of life and they're getting it and they mm -hmm. can look at themselves and say, well, this is what I've done and I'm glad about it. Where you don't have any regrets or feel um, yes. bad that this is where you are. Right. And that's, you, you feel satisfied. Yeah, I'm very satisfied. I, I think the one regret I have um, right now is that the relationship between me and my ex-husband is, is not very good. And the only reason why I regret that is because of the three children. Um, but it's he has his own personal problems to deal with, and uh, I just don't have time for them. <laughs> and I would say that that's the one thing that if you, know, if you say, well, what do you regret? I would regret that, that... Um, certainly not the divorce because that was it was a painful thing but something that had to be done but um, I regret that our relationship is very bad really it's very hostile and that's not good for, for the children and other than that um, I'm happy with my life I'm happy with my job I'm uh, I have investments so that my children and I will have a secure future I, I really am not dependent on anyone in terms of financial matters although I have someone in my life that's very important and I depend on for emotional support. But uh, in terms of my career, in terms of money, in terms of my home, in terms of vacations, I fly to the Bahamas when I want, not to the Bahamas, I like Jamaica, uh, or Antigua, whenever I want. I fly to Chicago for a weekend if I want to. I go to New York, I go to you know, California, which is my home, two or three times a year. I'd send my parents places. And so I am, yes, I, I would say I'm very happy with my life. Did you, um did you have grow up with a large family or something? I have, I have uh, two sisters and a brother. I have a brother visiting me right now from San Francisco. I'm the oldest. Oh, I'm the oldest. <laughs> oh, are you? Yes, I have two oldest sisters. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yes, it's kind of hard being the oldest, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is kind of difficult. Yeah. And in, in some ways it's good because you, you have more attention because I think you're... But on the other hand, it's, for me it was a little bit harder. My parents were very strict. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's so much easier for my sister. Yes, than it, than it was, was for you, me. right. Well, that's how you paved the, the way. Uh -huh. your way yes. Yeah. Oh, I felt the yeah. same way. I thought, what? You let her do that? I couldn't do that. Right. Yeah. That's another thing I wanted to know if your parents were... Yeah, I'm very close to my parents. They're in yeah. San Francisco. Uh, I, I really attribute whatever success I have to the upbringing that I had. Um, they're good people and they really live for their children. And uh, I'm just very grateful that I have these parents. Well, I think I've covered just about everything. <laughs> okay. Oh, just one more thing. Um, do you feel comfortable when you dress the way you do every day or do you feel more comfortable in like jeans? Yeah, when I'm off the air, I wear t-shirts and blue jeans. Yeah. Uh, you, that's, that's me, you know, t-shirts and blue jeans. Uh, needless to say, when I'm going out, I will dress up. But when I get home, I immediately will put on a lounging uh, outfit or something. Uh, on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, it's blue jeans and a, a t-shirt. That's what you'll see me in. Um, well, I've covered everything, everything. I wanted to cover. Okay. And um, with me, well, this is my first time ever I would appreciate it if you could tell me if I left out anything or if there's something I should add that could make it more interesting. Or no, I that. think you've covered just about everything. Um, you might ask what opportunities are there for other uh, black women or what opportunities for young people, period, in the broadcasting industry. Yeah.